Hey guys, so today we're working on an Audi S5. They came in for paint correction and ceramic coating. I have it right outside. I washed the wheels already, washed the paint, I decontaminated the paint, so it's pretty much ready to go for inspection. What I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna bring it inside, put it on a lift, we're gonna look around the paint, make sure that the paint is in good condition. We're also gonna measure the depth because we need to understand what the depth of this paint is in order to perform the process. Then we're gonna define what the best approach for correcting this paint will be. As you can tell, the car is up on the lift. What we're gonna do now is go through the process of paint inspection. So we're gonna look at the paint, check all the way around and make sure that we know where the deep scratches are, where the paint chips are, if there are any, where the fill-ins are. We wanna make sure that they're there and we can avoid them or actually buff them, depending on what we wanna do when we come to them. But we always wanna keep a mental note of where these things are. That way you're well aware of what's going on in the paint. That's why I inspect the paint first and then measure the paint tap. Let's do the paint inspection now. So one of the best ways for you to inspect the paint is to shine the light right on. I mean, as simple as that sounds, shine the light straight on and look around. You'll be able to see from here if there are any swirls. Swirls are usually circular or sometimes it can be lines because the clay could have left back and forth scratch marks on there and it's essentially a swirl, if you will. So what we're gonna do is shine the paint right on and we're gonna inspect it. And then we know, hey, okay, there is swirls on this paint. There's some marring here and there's some dulling. I'll bring it in closer, that way you can see. And the best way for you to inspect it, let's say that your vehicle doesn't have as many swirls as this vehicle does at this very moment. And your vehicle is rather cleaner and it doesn't have that many scratches, but you wanna get a closer look at it and you don't know how because you can't see it straight on. What you wanna do is point the light in a 45 degree angle and then look at it from here. And then you'll be able to tell if there are any imperfections on there or any scratches. That's the easiest way for you to tell. So I'm gonna bring you up closer and we're gonna look at the paint that way you can get a close look at the details of this car. Now you can tell here that there are, there's some, some swirls and there's some marring on the paint here. And it looks like there's a little bit of haze in this section. So now what you can see here is there are swirl marks. You can, you can see in this general area right here that there are marks. There is some dulling in the paint. The dulling happens because of the clay bar. So when the clay bar is a little bit too aggressive, it leaves some dull marks. You can see them right here in this general area. The only way to change this and fix this is for us to go and polish it. So this is, this is a very aggressive step of uh, decontamination. Now you know that the dulling can happen because of aggressive claying. Now we know that there are swirl, swirl marks in the paint that we're gonna have to remove. And we also know that there is a little bit of haze here going on in this section that we're gonna keep an eye out right by the driver's side handle. All right, let's keep on moving along the vehicle. So you can see, let me change the color of the light. You can see it right there. It's a bit of a, of a deep paint chip. It seems like someone, someone hit it with a door or something like that. So let's keep moving along. Here's a paint, a paint chip that we're gonna keep an eye on. In this area right here, there are some scratches that are a little bit deeper than what a swirl would be. Right where the light is at. And you can see it right up here. So we're gonna have to keep an eye out here on the hood. When it comes to paint correcting the hood, we're gonna have issues like this. So it's best to keep an eye out for this area. So now I know in the future that I have this area to watch out for when it comes to cleaning this, this issue up. So now we have a better understanding of what the paint looks like. We know now that we have scratches, the scratches on the hood. We know that we have a paint chip right here to keep an eye out when it comes to this section. And we know it's, it's, uh, it's got a lot of swirls. It's got a lot of swirls and it's got some marring and it's got some, uh, some dulling on the paint. So we have to keep an eye out for these things and see what procedure would change the look of the paint and clean those things out. My next step is gonna be measuring the paint depth. We need to know how much paint depth we have in the paint and we need to understand all around where the lows are and where the highs are. So that we know when we hit a low section, let's say, we know, hey, so this section can't be done aggressively and we might to actually decrease the aggressiveness of the pad or the aggressiveness of the machine, the way that we go on the machine. We slow the pace down or increase it. We can make these changes as we come along because we've made a note of where these things are happening. So let's go ahead and do that and I'm gonna show you a little bit of what's going on as far as the paint depth. 
This is a paint depth gauge. So what it does is it measures the depth of the paint from the metal all the way to the clear coat and it gives you an average or an estimate of what the depth is like. That way you have a better understanding or you can estimate what the depth of the clear coat is, then you know if to take action or not. And what this just did is it made sure that the tool is calibrated and ready to go. So now it's gonna tell us what the depth of the paint is. So then right here we have a piece of aluminum and we're gonna set it on the aluminum and it's gonna tell us what the depth of the clear coat on that specific piece is. And we're looking there at 3.56. Now if I change it to steel here, it's gonna give us a reading and it says 356 as well. So we know it's calibrated and ready to go. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put it against the car and we're gonna test what the depth is like on the vehicle. So the way this works is we apply it directly to the paint and then it gives us a reading. So we're gonna move it to the front of the door. See if I can show it. Yeah, we're gonna go to the bottom of the door. Um, we're gonna go to the center. And then in the back. And now what you do is you calculate an average of all of them together and now you have an average of what the paint is like on this panel. Now, the problem with that though is that you don't have specific measurements. So what I normally do on the app is I keep track of exactly what points I measure so that I know when I move from one panel to another, I wanna know how low it is and I wanna know how high it is. That way when I move, I know how aggressive I can go and, and how not aggressive I should be in that section. This is very important so you know in the future, hey, I know this depth is here and I know how much I can polish and how often it can be polished. So that's exactly how it works. Uh, the only downfall of this tool and tools like this one is that it will not allow you to measure plastic, carbon fiber, or fiberglass. So Corvettes, um, fi uh, carbon fiber just like this one, and bumpers. You're not gonna be able to measure the paint tab. So what you wanna do in that case is you wanna take your best judgment on it. Now, you don't wanna go over there and start grinding really hard. You wanna take your time. You wanna see how the, how the bumper reacts to the, to the paint correction. Take it one step at a time. Never go too hard, never go fast. Take your time because you cannot measure that paint. So here we go, I'm gonna give you an example of what this would look like on a tool like this, and it would be zero. The reason being is that there's no metal behind this carbon fiber, so it doesn't have a way for it to bounce back and tell us the depth of that specific section. That's very common with plastics. Now there is a tool for this, but detailers are not gonna go and spend that much money on a tool like that unless you're a super high-end shop, I'm assuming you would, um, but they're very expensive. They're in the thousands and sometimes for someone like myself is not necessarily worth it. What I would do is just be careful in the sections and just avoid going too far. I'd rather leave light imperfections behind than uh, go too far because you can cut through the paint and then it will show primer and you would have to just repaint the whole entire panel at that point. All right, so this is the process of paint depth calculations and how that works. I'm not gonna continue going further on this. Now you have an idea of how this works. So my next step is gonna be identifying what step I'm gonna take to remove these imperfections that we are aware of. So we'll get to that next. We have a couple of things here. So we have the polishes. These are polishes by Rupes is a yellow, it's a medium polish, and white would be a light polish. They use a color, co color coordinated system. So the same goes for the pads. This would be a, a light pad, that would be a light polish, or you can use a light pad with a little more aggressive polish. In turn, you can use the yellow pad with a less aggressive polish, and you can use the yellow with the yellow for a medium, medium of touch. Um, as you can tell, this is my most used combination. Most colors, I get away with using the system. Sometimes some vehicles have harder paint, some have softer, so I have to change it up a little bit. So the only one that I don't have here is the blue polish. I just don't have it in stock right now. I was looking around and I couldn't find it, but I do have a pad and this combination also works very well. Medium aggressive polish with an aggressive pad. It removes paint much quicker. It also creates heat. You have to be very careful when you use these, these kind of systems. There are rules to using them. There is a process that you have to go through in order to use them effectively. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna divide the door panel into two sections. I'm gonna try a light, and then I'm gonna try a, a medium pad. And we're gonna see what results we get out of that. So I'm gonna go ahead and split it right here. This is in order to test the pads and see what, what works best, what the combination works best on this specific paint system.
I'm gonna bring you in closer so that way you can take a look. The division's right there. I'm gonna clean it so that way we can see clearly before and after. I'm gonna grab my light. This right here is before. This right here is after. There's a very noticeable difference between both. I mean, even if I put it in the middle here, it's like night and day, honestly. You can really tell what just happened to that paint and how much it needed it. This is the white pad and white combination. I'm gonna try the yellow and yellow on this side. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the tape back on here and we're gonna see the difference between white on white and then yellow on yellow. So let's get to that. I'm gonna tape it twice. I'm gonna try to keep it as close to the line as possible. That way we can see a clear difference before and after. All right, so now we got a three-way here. So I'm gonna remove the before tape. So white on white, before, and then yellow on yellow. So let's take a look. Yellow on yellow seems to have removed some of the lighter scratches that white on white couldn't really cover. And this is our before section. Uh, this is a great demonstration to show you that you can take different steps and get different results. So there you have it. That's the combinations that we have, white on white and yellow on yellow. I'm gonna be using the yellow yellow combination. I wanna remove as many scratches as possible. If you wanted to go a little lighter and you wanted to um, leave some of the scratches on here and you didn't really mind that, then you can go with the white on white combination. That's actually a great combination in this vehicle. Um, but I'm going for the a little bit more aggressive. We want to remove more imperfections. That way it has a nice little shine right after and uh, we can lay a, a layer of ceramic coating right on top of all of it. If you have any questions or there's something you don't quite understand, leave it down below. I'll try to get to it as soon as I can. Hit the subscribe button and hit the like button. It would really help me out. I'll keep moving with this channel and keep working towards helping you guys out the best way that I can. All right, guys, let's get on to the paint correction side. Well, looking around the vehicle earlier, I did notice the haze again. So it was on the passenger side, it's on the driver's side, it was on the hood. What I did end up doing is I took a video, show you exactly what it looked like from my point of view, because it was a little bit hard to see from, from the angle that I showed you before. So I'm gonna put this video up right now and we're gonna go through it together. So what you're looking at right now is the fender of the vehicle, it's the driver's side fender, and we're going up. And you can tell there that the light is showing what I call fingers, they're holograms essentially, or polisher trails that are hidden underneath the swirls. So you can see there that I'm going back and forth and the light is shifting and it's moving and it, and it, doesn't, it doesn't look like a normal swirl. It just shows more of a haze and more of a blue tone movement underneath the paint, if you will. And on this other video that I'm gonna show you here, I went back and forth on, on the hood and you could tell there that the same pattern is kind of repetitive along the hood as well. So the conclusion that I came to is that this is a uh, polisher trails. So this is improper use of a rotary machine usually. So usually when someone polishes improperly using a rotary machine, we'll leave what they call polisher trails or buffer trails. Some people call them holograms. These names can be interchangeable for, for this issue. That's kind of what I deducted that it is. I'm gonna show you the vehicle. I polished it already. I did a yellow one-step polish all around the vehicle. And I'm gonna show you what it looks like now after it being polished, what these trails look like. So you're gonna 
gonna get a, a glance of what it actually looks like once it's cleaned up. So what I'm afraid that happened was the, the owner noticed these patterns and the previous person that caused these patterns didn't wanna come back and repair the issue. So he just went ahead and started wash on the car wash as much as he could until the patterns were no longer as easily visible. So let's go over these patterns. I'm gonna show you what the patterns look like on the side of the vehicle and on the hood, and we'll go from there. So this is what I was referring to as far as the hologram. There you go, now you're able to see them clearly and you know what to expect when you see these guys and know that these are the holograms. So at first they may come off as haze if they're underneath swirls and you're not able to see them clearly. But once you remove the swirls from on top of it, you can tell that below there was some, some serious imperfections that, that were already done by previous detailers. My next step is gonna be showing you how I removed them and what it looks like afterwards. So let's go ahead and do that. We're in the passenger side of the vehicle now. I put a piece of tape here, as you can see, to divide the sections where I worked on, on the door and the part where I did not. So that way I can show you a before and after uh, the other way around before and after so that you can get a grasp of what the progress is with this combination that I have here so I have a black pad it's a hex pad I'm not sure who makes these if you do know just leave it in the comments below I forgot what company makes them right now I can't think of it and I'm using uh, Meguiar's this is 205 I believe yeah so this is Meguiar's 205 that I'm using in combination with the black pad in order to remove those holograms that we had on the door here. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna shut off the lights and I'm gonna show you the difference between the work that I did and the work that's yet to be done. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. All right guys, so the lights are off and now we're gonna see the before and after. So that's before, this is after. So here's the before. And here's this, the after. I realized that I didn't show the technique, so I'm gonna go ahead and demonstrate the technique and how I approached performing the polishing process here on this area. That way you get a glimpse of what it was like and what it's like to remove those imperfections in this vehicle. So one thing to note here is uh, I'm not using pressure. This is something that always comes up and it's hard to explain. Holding it steady against it would be applying pressure. The way that I'm gonna perform this is I am just barely holding the machine on. I'm only connecting to the surface. I'm just letting the pad connect to the surface and that's pretty much it. I don't wanna put any pressure. I don't wanna apply a ton of pressure on here. That's not necessary to remove these imperfections. And the speed that I'll be using this machine, the 15 LA chart is at speed three. I will begin at speed one in order to spread the product around and then I will start on speed three and go ahead and do my pattern and move on to the next section. So here it goes. I'm gonna apply a little bit of uh, polish onto here. And now I'm gonna spread it. So what I'm doing here is I'm, I'm going over the area that I wanna work and I'm defining it, applying the product there. And now I'm gonna set it to number one and I'm just gonna go ahead and spread a little bit. All right, so now my product's applied. It's on, on the surface. So now I'm gonna put the speed three and I'm gonna start performing the polishing process. That's pretty much it. So now we're just gonna wipe it off. All right guys, so that's pretty much it for this vehicle. I spoke to the owner. The owner does not wanna get it ceramic coated just yet. What they're gonna do is fill in a couple of chips here and there that are on the hood, on the bumper and whatnot. Just do some PDR as well before we go ahead and ceramic coat it. So they'll be back probably in a month or so, or once my schedule opens up a little bit, once I come back and get a ceramic coated with me, I'm gonna go through the process with you. I'm gonna show you what the process is like, what the steps that I take personally in, in ceramic coating a vehicle like this, and the quirks and the pros and cons of doing so. I hope this video was informational or at the very least entertaining. I look forward to seeing you guys next time. Hit that subscribe button, and until next time, peace.